Nope. We were all sitting around a dying campfire in the dark. I think we had set up somewhere near Jervis Bay. We were on our way to visit our grandparents in Sydney. Our parents had gone to bed, though in retrospect it's incredibly obvious, they were all just sharing a joint in one of the tents. My cousin Jack, who was 15 at the time, called the shots and decided we all had to tell the scariest story we possibly could or he would get the rest of all the marshmallows. There were four of us. Me, Jack, and Harry started to tell our stories at once, fighting over who got to hold the torch under their face, talking over each other, and loudly butting in to tell the others that their stories sucked. The only one of us who didn't say anything was Adam. He was the middle cousin, 13 years old at the time, and usually the loudest of us all. He'd been quiet and acting strangely the whole trip. When I finally got a word in, I told my story, which was essentially a very poor rehash of when a stranger calls, and was ready to claim my marshmallow. That's when I realized Adam had yet to tell his story. We all looked at him. He was looking down at his shoes, hands in his lap. Adam, it's your turn, Jack said. But Adam shook his head. I don't want to do this. It's stupid, he quietly replied. Fine, no marshmallow for you. You're obviously too scared to do this, Jack said harshly. Adam looked up, eyes wide, and I saw he was in fact very scared. Look, he said, I don't want to tell my story because it's way too scary, and look, I just, it's better if I don't. I've never told anybody about this. We all immediately started arguing that we'd seen scary movies at sleepovers, which were bound to be ten times more terrifying than Adam's story. Seriously, Adam said, poking the fire with a stick. I don't want to tell you guys. After all of us practically begged him, he finally sighed. He turned to Jack. Look. If I tell you this, you have to swear you won't tell mom and dad, or your parents, he said, turning to Harry and me. They won't believe this, and I'll get in massive trouble. We all will, okay? So please, I'm only telling you if you swear on your life not to tell them. Something about how serious he sounded made even Jack shut up and nod. Adam cleared his throat and we sat down, entranced, as he began to tell the story. This happened a month ago. You're not going to believe me, but I swear it's true. You know Mr. Jeffries? He asked, turning to Jack. Mr. Jeffries was their neighbor, up until very recently. He was about 50 years old, and lived alone with his cat and they used to tell us about how weird he was, randomly leaving the house at strange times, boarding up all his windows, and having a TV constantly blaring in what sounded like every room of his house. Well, one time, Greg and I decided to sneak into his house. I know you guys aren't going to believe me, so shut up before you interrupt and let me just explain. We figured out he always left his house at like 6 a.m. for a couple hours each Saturday, and we decided to sneak in to see if he was like a kidnapper or something. We climbed over the fence using the stepladder and crawled through the cat flap on his back door. He cleared his throat. Even though he was prone to exaggerating stories, this sounded very real. We started looking around, and it was really weird in there. Super dark because of the window thing, and he had like three TVs, and all of them were on. 
We started to get really freaked out, but Greg insisted we go upstairs and look around. Not even halfway up, we heard a key in the door, and he caught us. As soon as he saw people in his house, he pulled a knife out of his pocket, wielding it at us, until he realized we were just kids, he said. I thought we were going to die, but then he kind of calmed down and asked us what the hell we were doing there. He was shaking. It was weird, like he was scared of us. Greg's big mouth told him we thought he was kidnapping people or something and that our parents knew where we were, and if he did anything to us, the police would come. And Mr. Jeffries started laughing. He laughed for a while, and then he stopped and went kind of quiet. And suddenly, he just looked tired and old and sad. I wasn't scared of him anymore. He said, you kids are stupid. I don't kidnap people and I'm not going to hurt you. Get out of my house. You're lucky I'm not going to tell your damn parents because I was just as bad at your age. He moved out of the doorway and gestured for us to leave. We walked outside and Greg immediately bolted. But for some reason, I don't know why, I turned around and asked him why his windows were boarded up, why the TV was on. I guess I just really wanted to know. Adam kicked at a rock by the fire. This was the longest any of us had listened to a story without butting in or making a joke. He said, Because I'm scared, son. When I was a kid, something happened. Kind of like this. Thing is, the person I thought was the bad guy ended up being a very bad guy, and I saw something I shouldn't have. Since then, since I was 12 years old, I've been terrified he would come after me. After he said that, he just shut the door. I guess I just couldn't forget what he said, or how messed up he sounded when he said it. I mean, he was so scared he boarded up all of his windows. It was crazy. After that, I decided to go back without Greg and ask him to tell me the story. A couple of days later, when I knew he would be home, I knocked on the door. I told him I wanted to know the story, and he said to go home, but I kept coming back and pestering him about it. That Friday, I saw him drinking beer on his veranda, and I went up and sat on the steps. I told him he needed to tell me the story, and maybe because of the beer, he finally did. When Mr. Jeffries was 12, he hung around with two other guys from school. They were best friends, and they used to go exploring down by the river near where they lived. They used to have to sneak off to go there, though, because about that time, two women from their neighborhood had gone missing. A couple of times, they noticed a strange guy kind of lurking around a particular bend of the river, always appearing just as they were heading home when the sun would set. One of his friends got the idea that this guy must be responsible for the missing women and decided they should spy on him. They came back the next day with binoculars, a notebook, and Mr. Jeffrey's dad's camera, which they took without asking. They lied to their parents that they were having a sleepover and hid in the reeds near the river bend. Apparently, they were five minutes away from leaving when the guy appeared, checking his watch. They started taking photos. Maybe ten minutes later, a young woman arrived. And well, they were correct about the man. He began to hurt her, the woman, when she wouldn't do what he asked. They were freaking out about what to do, but
but as this woman was screaming, they decided to jump out of their hiding and try and help her. But this guy, he was young and strong, and he pushed the woman down and started chasing Mr. Jeffries and his friends. Mr. Jeffries ended up dropping the camera as he ran. They all ran for their lives, but the only one who did cross country was Mr. Jeffries, and the others couldn't keep up. He kept running all the way back home without looking back. He told his mom, and they called the police. Everyone went out looking for the boys and this man, but they found nothing. Mr. Jeffries took the police to the river bend, but there was nothing there. No camera, no woman, no friends. They never found the guy. And Mr. Jeffries' family moved to a different town within a couple of weeks. He told me not to tell mom and dad that he told me this story and that he was crazy for even telling me. Part of me thought it was too crazy to believe, but I looked it up online, and it really did happen. I felt so sorry for Mr. Jeffries, so I went over a couple of times after that, but mom and dad caught on that I was visiting him. They thought it was nice of me to spend time with him, and they invited him over for dinner probably to check that he wasn't some kind of creep. And Jack, before you ask, this was all while you were at camp, so that's why you weren't invited. I couldn't believe it when he actually agreed, and on the day, he was there on time. He had brought a bottle of wine, and it even looked like he tried to clean himself up. Everything was going really well, and he was getting along with mom and dad until he and dad started talking about some book and he walked over to the bookcase next to the kitchen. Mr. Jeffries immediately went white and started shaking. He said he had to go, that he wasn't feeling well. He practically ran out the door. Mom and dad felt super sorry for him. Mom said he must have had some social anxiety or something. Really early the next morning, I heard noises outside and looked out of the window. It must have been before 5 a.m. or something. I saw Mr. Jeffries out in the front of his house, packing up all his stuff into his car. I snuck downstairs as quietly as I could, headed outside, and walked over to him. He jumped when he saw me and seemed almost scared of me again. I asked him what was wrong. He kept packing and didn't respond. But as he got into his car to leave, he looked at me right in the eyes and said, Son, I may be old, and I don't know if I can trust you, but you have no way of knowing where I'm headed to, so here goes nothing. That man I saw in the photograph on your bookcase, that was the man who killed those girls and my friends. The man I'm hiding from. Adam swallowed hard, voice trembling. You guys, the man in the photo was our grandpa. Thank you for listening, and I hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you did, <laughs> you know what to do take that like button down by the river and just well make it uh make it disappear if you know what i mean shout out to the author of this story reddit user creativity and that's spelled in a very creative way if i do say so myself link down below uh to their reddit profile and the original post on no sleep now um i'm not sure if the story is true but uh if it is uh, I, I want nothing to do with it uh, and tell your grandpa that um, I know nothing, I say nothing, okay? It's all good. I'm not a snitch. Until next time, everybody, remember to stay safe out there. I'll be seeing you in the next video.